Hello, um, it's quite a crowd tonight. Neil Maguire never asked me to do this again. Um, I'm going to talk to you tonight about Glasgow and I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that I've documented in the past eight years in terms of how Glasgow has um, occupied the post-industrial city. So you should all know this car. This is, the year is 1971. White Triumph sports car whizzes down a newly constructed empty M8 that's just tore through the city centre. Opening um, scenes to the Oscar Mazzaroli film, um, Glasgow 1980, a film that preaches Glasgow's rebirth as a post-industrial city. The film ends um, on the grand claim that Glasgow is a city of fighters and has been blighted by deindustrialization, enormous social problems and violence, but it claims we're a city with energy, an energy that's expressing itself and rediscovering itself through the dynamism of change. The film ends in the infamous road to nowhere um, with the words to be continued. So I've been looking at Glasgow and in terms of how the um, powers that be have expressed that energy and occupied different parts of the cities over eight years. This is the Marnock 2009 before the Commonwealth Games. Um, this is local uh, councillor George Redmond, or Gorgeous George, as he's more widely known. He's excited about the arrival of the Games, but he tells me the people of Dunmanic have waited 30 years for changes, someone's got to take it in the chin. This is Margaret Giaconelli um, and George, who have a dispute to settle. Her home is to be demolished to make way for the Games, and she wants a decent price. She's offered 29 grand and refuses. People are desperate for any kind of post-industrial occupation. Even a new Tesco would suffice in Dunmanic. It's a land grab, a plenty, and dodgy deals a plenty with a clock ticking. So Margaret's the person who ends up taking it on the chin. She's evicted from her home and she's, her home's destroyed along with any old traces of old Dunmanic. She always argued against the post-industrial occup occupation of Dunmanic via a two-week meg two mega sporting event. It was never in the interest of the local community. So, whew. 2014 though, the sun shone. It was like tonight, you know, the sun shone, Glasgow rocked. We got a new velodrome, other sports facilities, arenas given a refit, Glasgow rocked. The jewel in the crown is Athletes Village, what we're looking at here. So it's hard to argue how this isn't a progress in what was before. But as one older resident pointed out to me, this is the third Dalmanic he's seen in his lifetime and he can only hope to get it right this time. Post-industrial, um, before we had people make Glasgow as a slogan, we had the Scotland, uh, Scotland style, which nobody really knew what that meant. It was all about shopping. One thing for sure, that, that was that Paddy's Market, the infamous flea market in Glasgow Institution, selling second-hand clothes from blankets, kitchen sinks and everything else, just didn't fit with that slogan. Crime ridden midden ran the headline in the evening times. If Paddy's Market had operated in the post-industrial desert lands of the north or the east of the city, it might have just been spared. But this was prime retail estate and a merchant city hospital area. It was a desperation to occupy it with something cooler. There was talk of creating a new market, a combination of existing traders and new vendors selling art and bric-a-brac. A modern day Camden style market, they said. Um, but nothing ever materialised to that. The lane's been empty for seven years now, and we as taxpayers are still paying network rail, owners of the site, over £100,000 a year in rent. Another area was Kipka Pass around the Gallagate, and this was initially a hive of Victorian tenements, bustling back courts, long gone. It became a flea market akin to Paddy's Market. When a wallpaper shop went on fire for several hours in 2011, the whole street level of the shops were demolished and then boarded up. Left a huge crater in the uh, proximity to the city centre. 2014, Skipka Pass is transformed into Barland Park, landscape with benches and bisected by a Jim Lambie designed pathway and homies to the Barland Ballroom. Rarely in Glasgow do we see open spaces so close to the city centre and it feels like a fitting moment that this could be a fitting, fitting tribute to the history of the area, but sadly this is just a temporary space, a wee space for a wee while they call it. The Barra's Market today as well faces an uncertain future as Tesco's pound shops and the internet and the miserable Scottish climate rob of traders. Combine this with the war crime of the Barras is not what it once was, and you can know that change is inevitable. Today, outdoor stalls and storage vault units have been transformed into new artist studios. A new lease of life is welcome for the Barras, but local existing traders want to be assured there's a place for them. Um, the question remains whether it'll be a place for trade or if it's going to be a place for the creative arts. Oh, goodness gracious me, this is a fucking nightmare. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, anyway, Govan, 2013. A visual testament to the greatest industrial revolution that ever took place in Glasgow. The cranes lie dormant, rusting and unused for many years. Ship shipbuilding is obviously no longer what it was in the Clyde and no one sees the point in the cranes anymore. They're scheduled for demolition by the shipyard, shipyard owners. 
2014, in the last of the Govan Cranes is demolished, appeals to restore at least one of the cranes on the site are ignored. At the same time as this is happening, the Kelpies have just been finished and opened, towering symbols of legacy and industrial heritage, just at the same time as the Glasgow skyline is robbed of theirs. So still on Govan, the Riverside Museum and the tall ship are surely suffice to replace the loss of rusty old cranes. They too tell the story of Glasgow's industrial past in the River Clyde. Beautifully designed, multi-award winning, accessible building, if it's viewed from the right side of the river. Because viewed from Govan, the Riverside Museum is separated by the river and buffeted by the derelict wastelands of the Govan Graven Docks with steel fences and barbed wire. The young people of Govan who are worked with their project have a different and more distant view. It doesn't feel as if it's meant for them and it doesn't feel like part of their city. And there'll be pause and because I'm just speaking too fast and it seems it's, it's definitely longer than 20 seconds actually. Um, so, housing, of course, how could we not talk about housing? Um, Red Road Flats, one sold me four and a half thousand people um, manufacturing collapses, unemployment goes through the roof, drugs and crime create what the council claims a sink estate. Demolition is the only solution. In 2014, the plan is to demolish Red Road as part of a live television broadcast for the game's opening to an audience of a billion people. <laughs> Doesn't happen, of course. Um, in the end, one of the blocks survived. I think they had a big sell, uh, box of explosives with a sell-by date and it had to happen on that date. But two of the blocks survived the onslaught, and as the smoke cleared, it turns out, you know, everybody else is in a panic. The housing association, the council, the demolition crew look in dismay and panic. Everybody else pisses himself laughing, but no one knows what's going to replace Red Road. 2017, we re returned to the road to nowhere. Um, as a reminder, that we're in a constant state of change in Glasgow, and everything is to be continued. Never again. Thank you. <laughs>